Absolutely. Derek, Russia has also threatened Israel, declaring that Jerusalem is not its capital mm -hmm. and that the Golan Heights doesn't belong to them. You think Putin's being compelled by God oh, by to move something. into Israel? And could we see the beginning of the Gog and Magog yeah, War? Can. That's a big question, but I've been wanting to get to it, and I'm putting it in on right now. Well, that is, that is a big question. I, I think that, uh, and I wrote about this in my book, Last Clash of the Titans. Um, I believe the Gog-Magog War ends at Armageddon, and there's good scriptural evidence to support that theory. Gog in Ezekiel 38-39 is the Antichrist. And Jewish religious scholars see this today. I mean, they believe that the Gog-Magog war is the end of all wars. Mm -hmm. We tend to think Russia is connected to that because of the verses in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that mention the uttermost north. You come from the uttermost north. The uttermost yes. north is where... What is uttermost north in Hebrew? Where else do we find it in the Bible so we can get a clue? Because if we just look at a map and draw a map, nor you know, line from Jerusalem north, we come to Russia. That mm -hmm. makes sense. But in Hebrew, it's Yarkate Tsephon. And it's only two other places in the entire Bible, which means it's weird. And as our friend Dr. Michael Heiser says, if it's in if the it's Bible weird, and it's weird, it's, it's important. important. <laughs> Psalm 48 is one reference. And in Psalm 48, the psalmist compares Mount Zion, which is God's holy mountain, with this other place called the uttermost north. Yeah. Yeah. Mount Zion, yeah. beautiful in elevation in the uttermost north. Now, wait a minute. Even 3,000 years ago, the Jews of King David's day knew <laughs> that uh, Mount Zion, the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, is mm. not in the uttermost north. In Hebrew, it's Harat Zion, Yarkate Tsephon. The psalmist is having a little word play there, but he's comparing two mountains, Zion and Tsephon. What is Mount Tsephon? Well, we get the clue in his Isaiah chapter 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? He wants to establish his mount of assembly on the sides of the north, the heights of the north, the uttermost north, Yarkate Tsephon. Mount Tsephon in the ancient world, everybody knew was where Baal's palace was located. That's where Baal ruled over the cosmos. In fact, even the Greeks, their version of Baal, Zeus, fought a mighty battle at Mount Zephon with a monster called Typhon, whose name comes from Mount Zephon. This was such an important location in Hebrew mind that the word for north, the compass point north, is Zephon. In every other Semitic language, it's Simal. But to the Hebrews, because of the location of Baal's palace, Mount Zephon became the word for north. Where is it today? It's in Turkey. It's a, it's a mountain called Jebel al-Akra. It's in Turkey, very near ancient Antioch. I don't think that's a coincidence because mm -hmm. Antioch is where Christians were first called by that name. Mm -hmm. It's near Antioch, just across the border from Syria. The point that Ezekiel was making in the Gog-Magog prophecy is that this is a supernatural war against a supernatural enemy. Gog is the Antichrist. He is Satan's commander-in-chief. And when this war happens, and in Ezekiel 39, we see it end with God saying, the nation's I will not let my holy name be profaned anymore. This is Ezekiel 39, 7. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Yes. Amen. That's the only place in the, in, in the Old Testament where you see that phrase, the Holy One in mm. Israel. Every that other place, was. it's the Holy One of yes. Israel. Why in Israel? Because God himself is on the battlefield that day.